Welcome to the show. We have a great show today. I really think you're going to enjoy it. Uh, today we're going to be taking a lawnmower blade and turning it into a perfectly functional knife. We're going to do that without using a forge, uh, without using any kind of a heat treating process. What I'm going to be doing here is just cutting out the shape of the knife that I want from the existing blade. Now there's enough of a, there's enough of a flat area in here that I should be able to get a perfectly decent functional knife without having to heat up and reshape any of the metal. Now I'll be going for a cleaver shaped knife. I'm using this, uh, this hole in the middle as kind of a finger groove. There's actually a few different styles of knife that you could design using a blade with this shape to it. One example that comes to mind is a lot of hunting, skinning, even bushcraft knives will have a blade that's maybe three and a half to four inches. And I believe there's enough material here that you could go for that type of a blade profile uh, if that's what you preferred. Uh, in this case, I will be going for a cleaver type of shape. Now to do this, I'm using very basic tools. Uh, I think it could be done entirely with hand tools. If you were very patient, you could do it all for maybe 15 or $20 worth of, worth of hand tools. But if you have just one or two basic power tools like the grinders that you'll see me using or the belt sander or belt grinder that you'll see me use a little bit later, uh, you can definitely save a little bit of time. And, and as I'll discuss as we go along, the tools I'm using, these are not real high grade tools. These are things you could buy pretty cheaply either at a place like a Walmart or you, know, you could order them offline off of Amazon or pick them up at Harbor Freight if you have one near you. Now, as I mentioned, I don't want to do any actual forging with this particular project. I wanted to make sure that this is the type of build that somebody could do if they didn't have access to a forge or didn't have access to proper heat treating equipment. So I will be using only the flat part of the lawnmower blade. Now, of course, all lawnmower blades are shaped differently. And if you're planning to do a project similar to this one, you know, you'll have to keep that in mind and work around any contours that the particular blade may have in it that you're using. Now I should mention that with these blades, they typically don't go for like a really high rock well. Uh, I did some research on this before I did the project, and most of the time you're probably looking at somewhere between 40 and maybe at the most 50 rock well. That's definitely on the softer side. That might be something you'd see in a machete blade or an axe blade. Definitely not typical of like a hunting blade or bushcraft type of blade. Uh, usually you're looking for 56 to maybe 60, 61, 62. Rockwell. So this is a little bit lower than that, but at least it is heat treated. You know it's a very, very tough blade because that's what these are designed to be. You know, they're designed for a tremendous amount of abuse. And if it starts to lose that edge, because it's a little bit softer steel, it shouldn't be hard to sharpen it up again. Now, if you have a forge or some other way to bring the temperature up, uh, I do have a couple of other videos where, where I made more, you know, full-size lawnmower knife blades and I did some uh, blacksmithing type of work on those. But again, I, I really wanted to demonstrate what was possible without having a lot of tools or an expensive shop. One word of caution here, uh, you'll see me using a couple of angle grinders. Grinders are actually pretty dangerous. There's a lot of different ways that that blade can catch, the thing will jump on you. I've gotten nicked a few times by these. Definitely read the instructions when you buy one of these and make sure to follow all the proper safety protocols. Probably the most important thing to do is to keep your eyes covered with some decent safety glasses. And again, just whatever safety equipment is recommended. You're also gonna to wanna to have something to protect your lungs. I use a respirator that uh, they range in price anywhere from 10 to maybe $30, uh, depending on where you get them. I will include an Amazon affiliate link below so you can pick up the pair that, uh, that I'm using but you can usually pick them up at local hardware stores pretty easily too. You've probably noticed here that I'm making cuts uh, where I'm intentionally avoiding any kind of, um, any of the bent areas or the contoured areas of the lawnmower blade. Uh, that again is because I don't wanna have to use any kind of forging techniques to make this blade. I do have a couple of other videos. I might link to one here uh, where I've made knives using more the full length of the blade. Lawnmower blades can be a very useful source for metals to practice with. You can find used ones pretty cheap if not free, and sometimes you'll even find brand new ones that are on some type of a clearance sale. Uh, more than once I've picked up new lawnmower blades for three or four dollars a piece. There's pretty much no way you're going to be able to find a knife making steel for cheaper than that. So I did my best here to cut the shape directly out of the blade so that I can use the rest of it later for other projects. Uh, but if you weren't really concerned about that, you could just go in and sort of cut out that central rectangle part and then cut away the pieces that you didn't need for the knife you were going to make. There really isn't anything too tricky about this. Uh, again, be sure that you're familiar with whatever tools you're using and just take your time crafting the shape that you want. For this particular project, I happen to like an angular look. Uh, you know, it's going to be uh, a cleaver style and cleavers often have an angular squared off look to them. 
So since that's a part of the overall aesthetic that I'm going for, there isn't going to be very much additional cutting or grinding work to do. I am going to contour the handle just a little bit to make it fit a little bit more comfortably in the hand. Uh, probably also soften a few edges just to make sure that as I'm holding the knife and using the knife, uh, I don't wind up with any, uh, I won't call them scratches, but you know, if you don't design a handle right, you can get a few little sort of hot spots there if you're using it very much. I want to make sure that doesn't happen. So I'm kind of rounding edges a little bit. One of the really nice things about making a cleaver style knife is that you usually have either no curvature to the blade or a very minimal curvature. And that makes the process of putting in a bevel and putting in the final edge very, very simple. I've found that this type of knife is very good to practice on. If you're having any kind of trouble with the fundamentals of putting in a bevel or an edge, it's really gonna show up when you're working on this kind of a blade. Now I will mention again that although I'm using a belt grinder to do this, the same work could be done using a quality metal file and doing the work by hand. Obviously that would take a lot longer, but it can be done that way. And also you could even use the grinder that we were just using for putting in some of the contours. In fact, I did a video about four or five months ago where I made a larger cleaver knife, uh, and I did that one entirely with a grinder. So uh, I'll link to that here. You can go and check it out if you want to. Now I won't go too much into the detail of what I'm doing. I'll just say that if you aren't using a guide that's specifically designed uh, to give you a good bevel, there's a lot of practice that goes into this. It's still very much a technique that I'm working on. You have to concentrate on getting a feel for what's happening in that interface between the belt and the blade. It's a little bit of a subtle process and you really have to pay attention to the angles that you're working at. You have to concentrate on, on holding that blade very steady and uh, making sure that you're not changing the angle as you're bringing it across the belt. Uh, one other point to make, because this is already a heat treated and tempered blade, we definitely don't want to heat up the steel to beyond that temper point. With a blade like this, I'm guessing, although I don't know for sure, we're probably looking at about four or 500 degrees for the temper. It may actually have been a little bit higher, uh, but since I don't know that much about the metallurgy behind lawnmower blades, I'm going to do my best to keep the temperature of this blade well below that point. So let's say well below three or 400 degrees. That's not going to be too hard as long as I keep dipping it in water. The nice thing about doing something like this and not using gloves is you definitely get that feedback on your fingertips. When that metal starts to heat up and it gets to that point where it's uncomfortable to handle, you know you're probably getting up into that 150, maybe even 200 degree range. Definitely time to take it away from the belt, cool it off in the water, uh, make sure you can touch it again, make sure it's back to a comfortable temperature uh, before you take it back to the belt. And again, as long as we do this and we don't get the temperature up into that three, four, 500 degree range, we shouldn't lose any of the strength of the original heat treat that was on the lawnmower blade. So once I have the basic bevel in, I'm gonna go back to my grinders uh, I'm using a what's called a flap sanding disc here and I'm going to put a finish on that will be pretty close to the final finish I'm going to do. You'll probably see me a little bit later with some sandpaper and other things kind of taking out some of the bigger scratches. Uh, this is really a subjective process. You can do as much work or as little work as you want to. Since we're working with a lawnmower blade, I kind of like the idea of leaving it a little grungy, leaving it a little bit scratched up, a little beat up because it really tells a story of you know where this metal came from. I'm also going to be leaving some of the original uh, stamp in the metal that was put there by the manufacturer of the blade. I think that's kind of a cool little piece of history of this blade. But as I said, that's entirely subjective and you could really put any finish you wanted to on this. I've got a lot of other videos where I do a variety of different finishes. For example, you can actually make a really beautiful hammer forged look, but again, putting a finish on the blade, you know, that's entirely up to you. Some people love a mirror finish on a blade. Some people like a grungy look, some people like a, you know, a distressed look. And if you're interested in exploring any of those, there are lots and lots of videos out there on how to do that, you know, how to get a stone washed or acid washed look, and really a thousand different ways to finish out a blade. I do have some other videos on that, so I would invite you to, you know, look around the channel and see if you see anything you like. Um, but like I said, there's other channels with other videos that will go into detail on how to finish a blade. So once I'm satisfied with the overall look of the blade, I'm going to bring it back to the belt grinder and I'm going to put the final edges on the blade. Here again is an aspect of knife making where there are many, many different techniques. Uh, some people would do this exclusively on stones. Some people have, you know, electronic mechanical sharpeners that they use for doing this. You know, I've been at this for about a year. Uh, so in many ways, I'm still in the process of developing my skills, you know, trying to develop that, um, that real tactile feel for how to put an edge on or how to put a bevel on. 
So in most of my videos, you'll still definitely see me doing this real, you know, kind of hands-on work and uh, kind of going by feel. With that said, you know, there isn't a right way or a wrong way to do this. Uh, I would say the right way is the way that gives you the edge that you want on the blade that you're creating. Again, you'll see me going back and forth to the water just to make sure to keep it cool, especially when that steel gets very, very thin. It's going to be real easy to overheat that. And at this point, it would be a real shame to, uh, to damage the temper that's on that steel and you know have to grind it down and start over with that edge. Now when I think I have a pretty good edge on here there's a couple of ways I'm going to test it. Uh, one is the shave test and you'll see me do that a little bit. This is definitely not what I would consider a shaving sharp edge. As you'll see here it'll take some hair off of my arm uh, but it's not it's not something that would be a pleasure to shave with by any means. But knowing that it will take a little bit of hair off lets me know that I'm pretty close to the edge that I want for the purpose of this video, I'm going to call this sharp enough. Now, to be perfectly honest here, I really like the look of this blade as it currently stands, but there is one thing I am going to do. I'm going to put a handle on this, some type of a grip uh, that's going to give me a little bit better purchase on it. And uh, for that, I'm going to use kind of a unique method. There are a lot of different ways to handle a knife. I've done wraps before using paracord or twine. Obviously, you can use scales, either wooden scales or some type of composite material. For this, I'm going to use some rubber tread. You'll see what I mean here in a second. I found these at Harbor Freight. They're just a peel and stick rubber tread. I suppose it's the kind of thing you'd put on steps in a shop or something just to make sure that people coming in with maybe wet boots or something that they've got a good rubber tread to step on. But I like the simplicity of just being able to, to peel them off and stick them in place. I tried this before on another knife. Didn't really like the way it looked. Didn't really like the way it felt in my hand, but I think it'll be perfect for this one. So the nice thing about this is it's very soft rubber. It'll respond well to being cut, uh, to being sanded or to being ground down. So basically, I'm just going to trace the general outline of the shape that I want for the, for the grips. I'm going to cut that out with a sharp knife, make sure the, the handle area of the knife is very clean. I'm going to stick these on there. And then just to put the final finishing touches on, I'll use the sandpaper, use the belt grinder, maybe a little bit with a Dremel to give myself you know, the contours that I want, make sure it feels good in the hand, and shape it just a little bit to uh, kind of go for the aesthetic quality that I'm going for. Of course, when you're cutting this or sanding it, you have to be a little bit careful because it's real easy to ding that up, scratch it up, create some problem that you have to go back and fix later. Take your time, work gently, and uh, trim away the excess. Once I'm satisfied with the overall look, I'm just going to go through and see if there's any other details, any little spots that I missed. Take a little time to clean that up and make sure it has the look that I was going for when I set out to make the knife. So there's the finished piece. I have to say this feels much better in my hand than I was even expecting. Uh, that stuff has worked out really, really well this time. I might use it again. As I mentioned, I had used it once before, kind of had mixed results with it, uh, but it definitely worked pretty good for this blade. Uh, now, one thing to mention, of course, is that that stickum that's on the back there, it comes with its own sort of sticker glue. That's not really a permanent way to fix a handle to a knife like this. So if this is something that you're going to be using regularly, you know, if it's just a showpiece or something, it probably doesn't really matter. Uh, but if it's something that you're going to be using regularly, uh, there are other things you may want to do, including putting a rivet through or possibly even removing the handles. Uh, cleaning the glue off and then using something like an epoxy or some other type of glue that'll make it a more a more permanent bond. But for any kind of light use, uh, these are actually on there pretty securely uh, and they will work pretty well. So thank you very much for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed the project. I hope you got a lot out of this. And I hope you realize that if knife making is something that you want to get into or really any kind of metalworking, uh, you can start where you are, start with what you have and uh, worry about getting the expensive equipment later. Uh, don't be too concerned about the skills you have. Those skills come as you work. Uh, as I mentioned, I've been doing this for about a year myself, and I'm still learning. Every day I'm learning new stuff. Uh, one last thing I want to mention, I do have an Amazon affiliate account. There will be a couple of links below, so check those out if you want to. Uh, I do get a small commission from any sales that come from those, so that's one way to help the channel out if you're interested. And with that, I think we'll wrap it up, and I will just say whoever you are, whatever you're doing, have a wonderful time, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.